Bone Crusher, and you're watching the Art is King podcast. We are rolling, and my name is Delta Tango Mike. My name is Daniel Flores, but I go by the artist name Delta Tango Mike, or DTM for short. My title is The Creative Genius. There's a long story that goes with that. A long time ago, I guess I will tell it. Well, let me tell you what the title of today is. How to impact your career. How to impact your creative career with live streaming. Or, in other words, how to get my art noticed and hired. That's the theme of today. But let me tell my story because it's related. My uh, title as a, uh, as a creative person, the title that I like to use is The Creative Genius. And uh, a long time ago, way before the internet, it, uh, your, the way to tell, the way to pass on information from one person to another, the way to share your contact information from one person to another was business cards. I don't know who still uses business cards to this day, but that was the thing a, a long time ago, at least uh, where my story starts. And so I, uh, I, I remember deciding on my business cards, it was a big decision, you know, ooh, you know, because a business card is how you're gonna share your info one person to another, so you're not sure like, you know, uh, is it uh, is it going to uh, give the impression that I'm looking for? Are people going to get that point of what I'm trying to say and who I am? You know, you have to decide a whole lot of things. So here I am making big business decisions. Hmm, what should my business card say? Uh, and what contact info should it have? But the one thing that I, ha- I was having trouble figuring out was my title. Because at that time, I was doing tattoos. I was a full-time tattoo artist. Um, I painted. I did illustrations and drawings uh, traditionally. And, uh, and I was getting into digital. I was doing some graphic design already, some flyers, posters, uh, business cards for clients, and so on. So it was kind of like all over the place. And so on my business card, I didn't want to just like put one particular title or job description because then I might be talking to somebody else and they're... And, 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 who's totally unrelated to like tattoos. And uh, and so having the word tattoos or uh, tattoo artist as my title would um, would not be on message. And I'm a bragger. So uh, coming up as a creative artist, understanding branding was not what I knew, but understanding how to brag about yourself, I knew that very well. And so, so I was thinking, 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 and then, uh, and then this is the times when uh, email became a thing, right? And so, when you try to get your email address under your name, Daniel Flores, there's like a million Daniel Floreses out there. So, the only other option is like Daniel Flores 14 or something. And so that did not look good either. And uh, so I decided that I was going to be the creative genius. So on my business card, I put the creative genius, T-H-E, creative genius. And I said, that's my title. That's who I want to be. I want to be the creative genius. I'm going to be the creative genius. This is who I am now. And I printed my cards and boom, boom, boom. I'm handing out cards whenever somebody asks. And people who get my card, they're like, oh, that's cool. That's clever. You know, cool comments. Well, emails become a thing, and so now I want to type out the creative genius at what was those days? Hotmail and AOL and Yahoo and so on. And uh, but th- there was too many letters. Uh, Twitter came around, and uh, and so there were too many letters. T H E creative genius. So I found out that if I did the D A creative genius. Boom, that worked because that cut off one extra letter and that was enough letters for that um, username. So ever since then, I've been the creative genius. 
and um, and it's gone. It's worked really well for me as branding became a thing, as social media became a thing. The Creator Genius is what I was my uh, brand name. Uh, I did not push Delta Tango Mike or DTM because people who knew me personally, that was my name. But uh, as my title, I did make sure that my social media was that way. Instagram was a story. Uh, it's part of a st- part of that story, and that's when uh, Instagram said, "Oh, we own your stuff. We can use it however we want." So everybody was starting to cancel their Instagram uh, accounts, and I did too. And so the creative genius was lost to history then. So now it's Delta Tango Mike. The way I use Delta Tango Mike is my way as to show that's my name. That's who I am. That's when you're looking at me personally and the work that I do and the things that I do and who I am and uh, anything you want to know about the person is Delta Tango Mike. But anything you want to talk about when it comes to professional work and uh, art and um, the business of art, my title is The Creative Genius. So why does that matter? Well, number one, it matters because now you know who I am and what the difference is. Why? Why do I have two names? Uh, sidebar. If it wasn't for branding and social media, I'd have like 10 names because every day I think of something new. It's like, oh, that would be so hard if I use that. And then it's like, yeah, but then, you know, who, who's going to people gonna be like, well, who's that? Is that somebody else? Who's this new player in town? And it's just a whole totally different name because I come up with different ideas. I just was created like that. And the sidebar. Let's get back into it. So how to impact your creative career with live streaming plays into my story. And the story is that times and social media and the way we interact with the world continues to evolve. That's it. We were used to, we were used to business cards back in the day. Now... We hand out stickers. I hand out stickers. As a matter of fact, some, this year is uh, a perfect example of how we don't deal with people in person anymore. So you don't hand out a business card. You don't hand out a sticker. And here's uh, uh, one of my uh, tablets. This is my Surface. And it's got stickers. And this is my brother-in-law sticker right here. He did this lion. Um, my printer uh, and friend, Bo. Of velocity that's his sticker uh i think i printed this sticker yep the, the mexican flag and so on right uh, w my man w right there that's his sticker and um uh, I, I find stickers wherever I, I go i find stickers because that's to me stickers became the new business card like people don't people go home after an event with a stack of business cards and they go in the corner and like, yeah, I might need to talk to those folks one day. But a sticker, you get somebody a sticker, they're like, oh, I want that. And then they'll slap it on something. And then when they need you, it's like, I do know an artist. That's right. Let me find his name. And the uh, error in all these stickers is that there is no, there's no website address. There's no uh, IG or Twitter name. None of these bad stickers, bad designers. And only one is my sticker, and it's back here hiding because I stuck this one in front of it. In any case, my stickers, when I hand them out, they have Delta Tango mic or a link to my website. And the point is that we are exchanging information today different than it was last year, different than it was five years ago, ten years ago. Then when I started my career, literally, 1995, okay, um... We were printing uh, flyers on a copy machi- machine. We were actually, we had a typewriter. We were typing out the words, printing out, uh, uh, typing it on a, on a piece of paper, on a, pr- on, a, on a typewriter, taking that piece of paper, putting it into the uh, copy machine, running a couple of copies, uh, increasing the size of our printout so that we'd have different size fonts cut out the parts that we needed make a flyer with the different size fonts so you can lay do a layout that had hierarchy just thinking design before and i never went to school so i don't know anything about uh what people in school do and how school teaches you design it's just trying things out and understanding how uh things look um appealing to the eye 
So we manually did it. Cut and paste was real cutting scissors, pasting with glue and making flyers. Then, so, so then we run four flyers on a piece of paper, eight by 10, eight by 11, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, run it through the copy machine again, a hundred times, get a paper cutter, cut the paper to get the four flyers out, stack those flyers, put some black um, rubber glue on one side so that you can peel off one sticker at a time. I should have had a whole bunch of, um, uh, what you call it, uh, visual aids. In any case, it was like similar to like the uh, post-its, you know, there's a glue side. And then we go around town and drop off stacks of flyers at gas stations and clubs. I was gonna, I was, uh, it, wherever, wherever there were people who we thought needed a tattoo, who wanted tattoos like tattoos. Um, so the, the way to get known around town in those days was to be in people's face, uh, go to clubs, go to hang out where people hang out at and be like, yeah, I do tattoos. Hey, man, that's nice tattoo. Where'd you get that? You know, and start a conversation, build that rapport. I guess that's how you say that word. I'm not sure. Uh, and then and then engage, engage enough to that, to that that person be like, well, how much you charge and where are you at? And then they show up at your shop and you're doing tattoos and so on. That is much different than what we are doing today. And today, right now, because of the year 2020, we have found ourselves doing video. Even this conference, big ups to uh, Subsume and uh, and uh, uh, all my people putting it on together, is that it's video. We're doing video, right? I'm producing video right here in my art studio. This is my, my office. I have a ton of computers here and a couple of Cintiqs. There's a computer here that's doing the recording. I have a webcam there. There's a microphone right here, this microphone. I have my cup of coffee right here. I have an iPad. I have a overhead uh, iPhone that I use as a camera. There's uh, those four screens are two different computers. That's how we're doing social media right now. That's how we're doing social. That's how we are interacting with each other right now. Zoom meetings, uh, Blue Jeans, Microsoft Teams, and countless other ways that we're using online, internet-based, video, conferencing, meeting, and engagement. So the point is that when you want to get your artwork noticed, you have to be the kind of person, the kind of artist that goes beyond the art. I got tons of art. I can show you art. I mean, you can go to my Behance and see a ton of stuff. Go to my website, DeltaTangoMike.com, TheCreativeGenius.com. Go to my social media. I'm Delta Tango Mike everywhere. Just open Google. Go to do Google search. Type in Delta Tango Mike in one word. Boom. Everything there is about me. And 90% of it I posted. And I can show you sketches and drawings and things about my art. And uh, let's see, that was ugly. Let's, and, and I can show you, I, I know how to draw. I'm an artist. But the way to get in creative directors, art directors, clients' faces is by putting it out in a medium that they are going to come across, understand what they're looking at, what they're looking at is going to be appealing and hit them in the face. Be like, I need that person, whoever that person is, you know, let's give them a bag of money and ask them to come and do some work for us. And so that's where live streaming comes into play is that for the past five years, I've been talking about live streaming. Um, Liberty white been telling, talking about live streaming. Um, people like, uh, William Figgins have been talking about video. Lorraine Fouché has been talking about video. Um, I can't remember all the names. I should have had notes before I started talking, but I knew what I wanted to say, so, but I didn't have, I don't, I don't have notes on the people who I need to mention. However, we have been on this message of, uh, and me specifically on how artists need to get out just from the art need to get out 
and figure out how do we build relationships? How do we build connections? How do we get the word out about what we know how to do? And if you're not using social media and the tools that social media brings, then um, you are wasting stuff. You're just wasting things. Um, it, a lot of us are taking advantage of it and using it to our advantage and, and uh, to our benefit. And so there was a time, and of course I'm a bragger, so it's very natural for me. There was a time when you know MySpace was a, was a thing. Uh, there was a ton of other online systems available, and I'm not going to name them all because then you'll know how old I am. I'm an old guy. But I've done a lot of stuff, and no matter how old I am, I'm always looking for the new things. Like, what's happening right now? What are people doing? I am not getting into TikTok as, as deep as some people are, but I still have a TikTok, and I have posted on it. The um, WhatsApp has been a thing that I just uh, I never got the hang of it, and it's all okay. The point is that I've used these tools as they come up. And I've gotten clients because I share my process. And I'm a bragger, so I like to talk about myself. I like to brag on myself. But I'm a bragger, and I share, and I tell on myself. And that is enough noise to get into some people's ears. And I have enough artwork and posts to get into some people's eyeballs and to, to then have people with projects and budgets say, you know what, we need Dan. You know that guy, the Delta Tango Mike guy? And sometimes they call me Mike. My name is Daniel. But some people will call me Mike because of Delta Tango Mike. So they'll say Mike. And I'm cool with that. I don't care. I'm all right. Cool, cool, cool. When I'm on the phone uh, talking to AT&T or the cable company or somebody, they'll say, ma'am. All right, I don't care. You call me ma'am. Um... But when you write that check, it needs to say Daniel Flores or Azalea Creative, right? That's the business. And, um, and so I've, I've been able to build relationships with people who I hardly know in person through the online, through the social media, social networks, and get clients. And so let's go through a couple questions to go ahead and define what live streaming is and why does it matter today? But I, like I started to say earlier, we've been talking about live streaming and video production for uh, social networking for a long time. When Facebook added that Facebook Live element to their phone, like where you could just pick up a phone and um, and turn on Facebook Live and say, hey, what's happening, blah, 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 right? I mean, right now, so natural, we have uh, stories and uh, what is that? Reels and so on. It's natural now. But a few years ago, that was like the new thing. There was a an app called Vine. And you did 10 second, 15 second shorts or something. Two seconds. I forget now exactly. Those were new things. But as soon as it hit the market, and for people who do video, they're like, oh, wow. there's It's like everybody can be a videographer now. When Guitar Hero came out. Uh, everybody thought they, they, they were a guitar player now just because the tool was there, right? Or a tool similar to a guitar. Um, uh, PlayStation did a real good job of uh, putting things out that, um, that grab the public's attention. Uh, DJ. DJs were complaining. And you can go back in time on um, Facebook and, I don't know, MySpace. But probably Facebook and Twitter where DJs would complain. Like, oh, people think they, they're DJs now. Uh, when Instagram came out, everybody with a phone and uh, was a photographer now. You know, everybody can take pictures. And the thing is that not that you can't be those things. The thing is that there are tools coming out to the public, to mainstream popular culture that now allow you to go a step further. A step further that helps you build that momentum, build, helps you build that brand, build that legend of who you are and who you want the world to be. So a long time ago, the business card was my tool to tell people who I was. 
And and if I'm in person talking to somebody and I hand them my business card, well, I had the advantage of talking about myself right then and there so that they're left with an impression of who I am and the card is like a symbol of that impression. If they pick up my business card somewhere, then the impression that the business card gives is all they know about me. To the, in this day and age, we have a whole lot of tools, a lot. And if you if you look at you know cell phones, uh, if you look at tablets, and and the content that you can produce with any of those things, the content that you can consume with any of those things. When you look at all these different tools and the the the, the the tools within the tools because there's a camera because the camera takes pictures because the camera takes video because there's a voice recorder because and, and so when you take all those tools into account it's like well that is the things that you need in your creative career to go beyond just the art now you get to narrate your story now you have the advantage of being in person virtually being in person and sharing who you are and talking about who you are. And you don't have to let that uh, the other person interpret your business card. You don't have to, that other person doesn't have to interpret your art and, and make up things in their mind that could be wrong. Now you have a play. You have a part in this play that lets them Let's your public, let's your fandom, let's your potential clients know who you are. But it's up to you to take on these tools. So is uh, live streaming taking over the world? Right now it has. Is it pandemic related or were we on a path towards it? We were on the path. This is, this is another element of what social networking is all about. And, you know, I'm going to be honest. I don't, on Facebook, you go through all those connections that I have on Facebook. I won't call them friends because, you know, I'm not going to crash at their house and I'm not bailing anybody out. I guess that's how I look at friends, right? They're connections. They're um, uh, acquaintances of, some, of, of one level or another. When you look at all of those people, uh, you will not find anyone I went to high school with. Zero. Nobody I went to middle school with Nobody that I grew up with. It's not that I don't like those people. It's just that I'm focused on building connections and relationships with people who are aligned to my goals, to my purpose in life. And that's how I use social media. Not the social aspect of it where we just got to be friends with everybody. Because there's people I know in person who I'm not connected online because they have different views than I do, different opinions, and I don't have to see that. I don't want to see that. I don't want to open an application or open a computer and be like, well, I got to I gotta see what they got to say today and I have to accept it. No, I don't. But I use the media part. It's another medium. It's another way to express yourself, to connect yourself with those who are looking for that information. And then not necessarily the information that I have to share and the things that I'm saying to you right now is not necessarily just to the people who I know. It's not just to the people who I come across on a daily life. It's going to be people who have some of the same passions and inspirations as I do. The creatives, the writers, the illustrators, the designers, the... Um, um, singers, the musicians, the anything that you have a passion for that you're trying to find your way around and get to a professional career. Boom. That's who my focus is and that's who I am connected with. And social media or the mediums, the mediums of the social networks allow me to make those connections. And so video had been long way coming. Um, Instagram started with uh, the little, um, what do you call that stuff? Um, I forget words now. 
if I'm looking at Instagram and I go to the left, it's uh, stories, right? The stories. So the stories were like a minute, the limit, right? Now the stories can be up to 10 minutes. And I think I saw somewhere where it can be 15 minutes and stuff. Uh, and so it's like there is an evolution happening. Before that, Instagram was taking over the world. So it was all about the photos, the images. Uh, Facebook's about your status. What are you doing? What are you up to? And so just live streaming is just another element in the, in the evolution of how we communicate with the world and the networking, right? Some people say your network is your net worth. And it's not just having a lot of friends. It's about having quality connections that are going to help you get towards your goal. And it's not about using people, but it's about leveraging the connections and the positions that people in your connect and your list of connections have that will allow you to get towards your goal and you should be surround yourself with people who support your vision uh exhibit said hang around nine broke people you're gonna be number 10 um i've had conversations and a uh, particular person i'm thinking of about and we were having a conversation about something and she said she asked so dan what do you want like, if there's something that I could do for you, what would it be? And I'm thinking, like, I don't know. What could you do for me? And I think, well, uh, find me high-level clients. I want uh, I want projects with budgets. Okay, Dan, what kind of projects? Stuff where I draw. Like, that's the first thing that came to my mind because nobody had ever asked me that. That's that's what I look for in this, in this networking age is, like, leveraging connections that can help you find, uh, meet your vision for yourself. And that's what I want to do and bring value to the connections and, and uh, people I meet. So um, live streaming is, a, is part of what we're doing today. And if you're not leveraging that to find those connections and build that network and community with those people who are going to help you reach your vision, you're wasting a valuable resource it's just a waste that's it you can't say you're thirsty and then there's a whole gallon of water sitting there and you're pouring it out into the ground not even on a plant but on concrete you're like don't waste it um, now who do you live stream to who is your audience and who do you want watching your streams that's one of the important questions to start with it's like what is it this about what are you looking for to accomplish uh, people ask me all the time hey dan I want to do digital art. Uh, what should I buy first? Like, how much money you got? Um, what do you want to do with it? And um, and what do you prefer? So there's the, the piece. Price, purpose, and uh, preference. And so it is with anything you do today. Like, don't think about, oh, I should do podcasts. I should do video. I should do, um, um, uh, um what do you call those presentation decks? I should do blah, 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 all this stuff, right? Well, it, some of those things may be part of the path, but until you know what the path is about, you won't know what elements. It's like uh, running a race and don't don't know where the finish line is. And you say, well, I should go down Peachtree. Well, I should go down Midtown through Ponce de Leon and then cut over to whatever other street. Well, yeah, that's cool, but that's a cool route, no doubt. But why? That's not even where the finish line is. You're going, you go, you lost. And it's easy to get lost in Atlanta. In any case, um, we need to know, well, what's the goal here? What do we want to accomplish? So let me just take me as an example, right? Number one, you've heard me say this. I want, um, I want projects with budgets, amazing projects with budgets. You know, so that means that, um, that, uh, that, that there has to be some port, some form of compensation. But then at the, the next step beyond that is I want the f compensation to be X, 2, 3, X, 5, X, right? And so then that means that my social media uh, content needs to hit those type of people. I need to show and, and the type of work that those people are looking for. Just because you can draw, and I felt this way a long time. Just because I can draw doesn't make me special. It made me special in the classroom when I was a kid. 
made me special in the neighborhood. Um, excuse me. It made me special in my family to an extent. But my brother can draw. I had an aunt who can draw. She was really good. And she liked to tell stories. Um, so, but, but at some point as you, in your evolution as a creative, you're going to end up with a ton of people who can do the same stuff. And so I'm like, okay, so what about you? What about you? Where should we go with you? And I've had that, that question asked about me, asked to me. And like, where, where should we pay your price and work with you versus someone else? I'm like, I don't know. Cause I don't know. I don't know who that somebody else is. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Only you can tell me. Do you like my work? Well, you're, you know, it's a longer conversation, but at the at, at the basic level of it is, do you like my work? Yes, I like your work. But so do I like other people's work. Okay, great, great, great. So then let's let's take it another notch. Um, I uh, do they have the type of projects in their portfolio that can produce the level of art that you're looking for? Yes. Now the number is smaller. Like not everybody. Everybody can draw Mickey Mouse. Everybody can do a stick figure. Yeah, but can you draw a stick figure, you know, doing such and such? Can you draw a stick figure that's animated? Can you do, you start, you start to add levels to it. Do you, And uh, we need uh, somebody who can do a children's book. Great. Um, who of all those people who can draw a stick figure can put together a children's book? Don't tell me you can. Show me that you've done it. And that's how you start notching up and notching up. And so it is when you are streaming it's like not only can I just draw, but I can talk about my process. I can uh, share my tools, talk about my tools, talk about how long certain things take me, talk about the projects that I worked on, and you can see the level of skill that I have. Now, when I'm streaming, I'm not just streaming just to be another YouTuber or whatever, a video person. Uh, I'm doing it to show my level of talent the level of accomplishments that I have, the level of projects that I worked on to hit on the level of clients that I'm looking for. We need to have a purpose. Who do you want watching your streams? I did this, um, I did a, a, a mural years ago when I started doing murals. And a, um, a friend of mine has had a, a studio, our studio in this compound, in this building. And they had painted over all the walls and, and were very blank looking. And so I told my friend, I said, listen, you give me some money for some paint. I'll do a mural right here in front of your door. And he's like, all right, cool, Dan, let's do it. So he gave me some cash. I'm like, cool, boom. And uh, I, I painted. And I brought some friends. I invited friends I knew. I was like, hey, come on through. We're doing a mural. Just come and paint something. And so, of course, they painted under my direction. So we ended up with the painting that we needed. I posted my process, the whole process, like pictures. It took me three days. I forget how many days. I took pictures throughout the day, little short videos, stuff like that. And I shared it on Instagram and everywhere else. I had never done a mural. I wanted to paint big, and uh, and I hadn't to that point. But there it was. And then uh, so I shared it on Instagram so on. A year or two later, I get a call. I was like, hey, you know, been watching your work. Uh, love your mural work. We need you to do some murals at our company what all right <laughs> went to go see the place saw the walls send them a quote um they get the quote they're like okay damn i'm gonna get you a check that person would not, that was following me on instagram for so long because it was a while it was a year or so from the time i did that mural to the time we had that conversation and uh, i didn't even know it but that is who I want to follow my work. Companies and individuals who have budgets and are willing to pay whatever price I ask for. I, uh, we ended up doing those four murals in two weeks time and that the quoted price went with, the actual price they pay me was higher than the quoted price because there were some changes that needed to happen. Um, and uh with the artwork and so we had to add that in um you have to understand the point is you have to understand who do you want your client to be you can't just say i just want a job somebody give me a job Pfft, everybody's hiring somebody's hiring somewhere um walk up to the gas station tell them hey i'll sweep you outside give me a dollar and they'll they'll let you do that 
That's a job. That's not the job you want, so don't just say job. You have to be specific. I just want to draw. Somebody pay me to draw. Okay, well, what are you going to want to draw, and who do you want you to pay you? Um, we have to understand those things, and so live streaming is the same thing. We have to understand who do you want your audience to be. A friend of mine has been streaming um, and been drawing for a long time, and is, uh, um, he said that he had a conversation, and uh, this person asked him, do you want to be famous or do you want to be rich? Because there's two different roads and paths and processes for either one. And uh, and so we have to understand that for ourselves. Do we? And when we used to build websites a long time ago, we used to ask our clients, do you want to entertain people or do you want to sell things? What's the website about? Because it can't be both. You know, you should don't stop people at the door and say, hey, let's hang out first before you buy something. Nah, the idea is to come on in, buy something. And make room for the next person who's coming to buy something else. So you have to understand that part of yourself. And if with me is, I'm not, I don't want to sell anything. I don't want to entertain either. What I want is to impress those who have budgets and projects on a corporate level, on a brand company branding level, and say, you know what, Dan, your art is perfect for this project we're working on. For this upcoming thing and and in order for them to see that my art quality needs to be at the particular level level where i see those companies paying for art when i see commercials when i see ads when i see branding for companies i look at it and be like oh that's what they're paying for and if that's what they're paying for then my art needs to be at that level and then i look up through those artists those roster of artists, and I look at their portfolio, I look at their Behance, I look at their websites, and be like, oof, I need to step up my stuff. So we need to know who is the audience that you're looking for. Don't say everybody. It has to be very specific. And uh, you should check out some Chris Doe videos because he really digs down into how you define your niche uh, and what happens when you do that, You know, when you actually focus. How to live stream, what gear, equipment do I need to get started? What is out there to help me out? Listen, uh, let's go with this here. All you need is a phone. You know, It doesn't have to be a big phone. I got another phone up here. It might be easy to just get this one down. You know, boom, yeah, let's talk. I got too much stuff around here. Let's see, hopefully it doesn't fall down. Um, there's a phone right here. It's uh, it 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 doesn't take a whole lot. Can we get a focus? No, it's too bright. Um, doesn't take a whole lot, and and especially when the devices that we hold in our hands to make phone calls and text and check on social media are powerful enough to record video, record audio, take pictures. You can write. Um, you can shop on them. You can write blogs. There's apps. You can write a whole book on one if your thumbs are strong enough. The idea is that the that you can I can click on the Facebook app, click on the live, and I think this phone is not even on the internet, but it, it'll pull up the live. Yeah, I know, I know. I can't start a live video. I'm not even connected to the internet. Um, and then go with it. Hey, hey everybody, my name is DTM, Delta Tango Mike. I am a 2D illustrator and I love working on character art. I've worked in character art. I've, I've done character art for projects on uh, film and TV, um, animations, uh, branding, and uh, art installations. Check out my work, deltatangomike.com. And uh, let's go ahead and draw something. I'm going to sit down and draw and show you my process. Boom. I, I've seen lots of artists who set it up, set the phone up some kind of way. There are there are tools. There are um, uh, stands. There are uh, these uh, clip-on things that go on the table and have this long neck and they have another clip for the phone. And, and it costs like 10 bucks, 15 bucks on Amazon. And, uh, and boom, there it is. That's all you need. You know, as time goes on, 
you go ahead and get a microphone. You know, I have this microphone. I have the clip-on microphone that goes on the shirt. Uh, as time goes on, you get a light. As time goes on, you get a better camera. As time goes on, you get a better computer. But you need to get started with what you have right now. And let me tell you, I started a long time ago with just the phone. As a matter of fact, it might have been, uh, well, I don't know exactly what year. It has to be at least eight, nine years. I was doing a lot of art shows in those days. And, um, and so I thought in my mind that if I did interviews with the artists that were featured in the art exhibit and the group show, I'd be able to use that video and, you know, post it on Facebook and social media and get people interested to come to the show and uh and so the artists were cool they're like yeah all right then so what did i do you know i had an old junky phone and i set it down way down here and record and they're talking and of course you can hardly hear what they're saying the lighting is bad because i'm just using ambient light whatever's happening and then i realized you know what i don't know how to edit video so i got I had GarageBand and my laptop, an old MacBook, and I said, all right, well, we're going to at least post the audio. And uh, and so I just, I, I did not know how to do anything other than draw. I can draw. I, I knew how to do Illustrator and Photoshop, but that's it. And so little by little, I said, well, let me work on uh, some audio stuff. And when I started figuring out the audio and uh, I started the podcast, and then I, and I was still recording artist interviews with video and then pulling the audio out of the video to use on the podcast because I told myself, well, I'm still going to record the video because eventually I'll understand how to do video production and I'll be able to edit the video and publish and share it. Well, I don't know where YouTube and Vimeo and, uh, and but the. But that's how the podcast began. Next thing I know, I'm just recording audio because I already know how to do audio enough to do the podcast and, and sound really good. I started with what I had at the time, did what I could to publish some content that was going to get into people's ears. And next thing you know, people know about the stuff that I'm doing. That's what we have to do today. Uh, now, as time goes on, yes, you can improve on it. You can buy some stuff. Uh, I started using iPhones to um, stream to Facebook some of my events. I came across Cinemaker. Cinemaker taught me how to uh, focus on uh, using iPads and iPhones to stream. And then, you know, what's good lighting, what's good angles, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I study a ton of YouTube videos now. And when I'm watching um, these videos on, t on YouTube, I'm like, Oh, I like how they did their lighting. I like how their background is. Oh, I see how this and that. I'm, I look at TV shows and movies like, oh, that's good lighting. Oh, that's bad lighting. Oh, they messed that up. Um, and so I can see certain things. It, it It's all through time, through the practice and the experience. But until you start right now with what you have, we, we don't know where, where you need help, where you where what things could help you improve or work on. Uh, where you leave, where you live stream is an important part of your growth. And um, is it YouTube, Facebook, IGTV, Twitch, Behance, LinkedIn? There's a lot of options. And one thing I, I um, that helps you decide where you're going to stream is who do you want your audience to be? I stream on LinkedIn along with a bunch of other places. But LinkedIn is where I, I will stream on LinkedIn because I want business professionals. And it used to be more business professionals than what it is today. Today is kind of turned into a, a old, the old version of Facebook. Um, and that's just natural evolution. But I've, I've grown my network on LinkedIn to the point that a lot of professionals and business people um, can, are connected with me. And so they see my streams. They see my work. And, uh, and when they, the opportunity comes up that they need an illustrator, they, they think of me. And it's because I've proven myself through my streams, through my postings, through my bragging that I'm a professional, that I can handle the job and I worked on projects and I can speak on projects. I can speak on my process and it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. And so um, you, depending on where, who you want to listen to uh, your streams, to watch you create and share, then that's where well, the 
that's where that's what will determine the network that's gonna work best for you. I um Twitch Behance. Behance is a perfect place for me when it comes to sharing my process because that is centered around artists. A lot of artists come through there. And they're looking for information. They're looking for to, for ways to level up their skills, to level up their process. And so it's a perfect place for me to teach and share what I know. However, some of that same content that I post on Behance, I post on Facebook and YouTube because I know that some of the people who are on in the in the positions of the of uh, project decisions and budgets are also looking through and. They'll come across my streams. They'll see how knowledgeable I am about what I'm sharing. And then that's when they'll say, yeah, yeah, let's get that guy. That's what you want. I don't pitch anymore. I have. I, you, you want all this stuff to talk so good about you. You want this storytelling to be so good about you. You want all these things to connect in ways that put you in such a great light. That you get people to react to it. That you'll get a client to, to, that says, uh, is asking around, hey, we need an illustrator. Who you know? And then somebody you know will say, well, I know this one person who knows. And they'll talk to another person that knows you. And that second person will be like, oh, you know, we know Dan. I know Dan. Oh, I know Dan. I do remember Dan. And the next thing you know, there's two people telling this other client, oh, you need to talk to Dan. And then when they call you. They want you to work on their project. And then you give them a price and they say, okay, well, we need five of those. That's how using social media today, building your network and showing off your talents will help you in getting hired and finding better clients that you don't have to pitch. The worst thing we can do is beg for work, is tell, say to a client, put me in, coach. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do that project. Come on. Just just, just give me a chance. Okay, well, I'll give you a chance, but I can't pay you but such and such. And I heard this from clients. They'll say, um, well, let's get a student artist. I'm like, what are you talking about? Student or not, it's still an artist. And an artist should get paid. And you have, I know you're working with a company that has the money that can pay an artist, whether they're a student living at home, whether or they're out on their own and paying a mountain of bills with responsibilities and a family and children and whatever. It doesn't matter what their the artist's position in life is. What matters is their talent. Can they produce the work that they that you need? And I know you have the budget. So let's not talk about artists, uh, student artists, artists who are still in school. You know, um, we 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 don't want to be pitching ourselves and saying, oh, I can do that. I can do that. Because then the leverage and the negotiation now is in the hands of that person choosing who gets the job. Whereas what you want is the social media to talk so good about you because you put it out there. Right. You did enough. Uh, blog post, you've put enough pictures of your work, you've done enough case studies on your Behance, on your portfolio, you're doing uh, uh, podcast interviews, you're doing live stream interviews, you're doing conferences, and you're sharing your work and your expertise to the point is like, we need to get with Dan. Dan is everywhere. That's the, They said that to me. People say that. Dan is everywhere. When do you sleep? It's because I'm, I'm, what do you call it? documenting my process of everyday process, everyday things and sharing that, sharing that to the point is like, he's a professional. And this happened in real life uh, a couple years ago, a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, he had to uh, uh, go out of town for uh, Art Basel. And that same month is the month of December. Um, or, uh, when, uh, these photographers were coming into town from New York and doing a big photo shoot for a clothing company. And, uh, and so they were, they needed to hire my mentor to do the artwork background and set design so that, uh, they can do their shoot. 
And so, so my mentor calls me and says, hey, Dan, are you not going to Art Basel? I was like, no, not this year. You know, why are you making me feel sad? And then he said, uh, I didn't say that, but uh, his response was like, cool, well, I am, and I need somebody who's going to help take care of my clients. I said, what? He's like, yeah, uh, here's the number, here's the info, and this is what they need. And so I called them, I talked to them, and boom, yeah, they talked to me as if, as, as like, I need... Uh, they talked to me in a way where the job was mine. They were t- giving me responsibilities already. I'm like, whoa, 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 you know, this is how much money I need. And uh, and they were with it. At the end of um, the, the the project, two weeks later, um, they were gone out of, back out of town. Everything was straight. I ended up with a few pieces uh, like this. Uh, let me see that box behind me right there where my thumb is. Um, that was part of the set design. I ended up with certain things that uh, they were not gonna take to New York, and um, and so so later on, you know, my mentor's back from out of town, and I'm talking to him. I was like, you know, what they say? Are they okay? You know, you know, because I know I can be a little bit uh, extra uh, as an artist, but also as a professional and a businessman, you know. And and he's like, no, they're cool, they're happy, and they got the job that they needed, and 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 I'm glad it worked out. And uh, and he said, and you know. When uh, when the project came, when they came to me and they talked to me about it, and I know I couldn't do it, I thought about who could, who else could do this job, who else was professional enough to do this job, but a person who teaches artists how to be professionals. And I was blown away. I was like, "What? He thinks I'm a professional? Like my mentor? Oh snap! You know, I feel good about it. And uh, and that's it. Like you want." Your work to be so out there in the world talking so good about you that other people are talking about you and and telling another client a client about you so hardcore that when that client talks to you, it's like the deal is done. Like, okay, Dan, uh, we'll get you a check. Do you take uh checks? Like, yeah, I'll take checks. Do you take credit cards? Do you take PayPal? Do you take Venmo? Do you take whatever out there? I don't even know how many other payment systems are out there, but we do them. Yep, we'll get it. That's right. This is what live streaming does for you. This is what social media does for you. This is what telling your story does for you. These tools are just another way of you, for you to tell your story. Tell your story so many times over and over and over when that you can just recite it without thinking about it. These are tools for you to share your artist statement, share your bio over and over and over when again that you can tell it 10 different ways and still get to the same point. Use it. That is what my message is here for you today. That is what my message is for anyone at any profession and industry not just creative they all uh we all have the tools available to us now it's there you don't have perfect lighting fine do daytime don't have a microphone try to find a quiet quiet place um when i was starting to uh, record my podcast i used the phone and uh and uh audio recorder and I sat the phone in between me and the other person, and they captured the audio. It wasn't great, but it was enough. When we're sharing of ourselves and we're being true to ourselves and telling our true story and being honest, it's not about production quality. It's about the content quality. As time goes on, you'll work on that production quality. But right now, Focus on the content quality. Is it possible right now to succeed in that medium? You know, YouTube. Is there room? Is it possible with, with, with so many YouTubers already, with so many podcasts already, is it even possible to succeed in them? Um, and it depends on your definition of success, which should be its own conversation. Uh, success. But the point is that uh, uh, my last uh, this uh, point is that uh, it's not so much uh, about, don't think so much about why well, you're going to be as big as whoever the 20 million subscriber on YouTube is, right? 
what matters is can you do it so so can you produce the content to reach the right people because to this day and this is recent and this is like real life right now right now it's happening i did adobe max and when i uh and two days ago when i started um to the adobe max started i knew i was gonna be uh, sharing and posting and do my labs and i was gonna show up on the feed I took a screenshot on my Instagram, and I was at um, 7,800 uh, followers. Not a lot. not Like 7,000? Like who? I know a friend of mine. He was my uh, uh, intern, and he has 200,000 right? um, followers on Instagram. But here I am. You know, talking about the business of art, sharing, coaching artists in the business of art, and, uh, and I'm only at you know, 7,800. Uh, followers on Instagram. It's not about so 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 it's not about having big numbers and a big following. That comes at some point and it matters for some things. But when you're when you're cultivating quality clients and, and, and sharing quality content, what you're looking for is that niche. You're looking for to the you're looking to narrow down the the segment of the market that specifically touches on the things that you do and the type of level of clients that you want. So I, I did not know that going back to that mural story, I didn't know that this person was following me. I had met them a couple of times. I knew who they were. They knew who I was, but I didn't know they was going to follow me on Instagram and then be interested in a uh, mural and murals that was in the thousands of dollars. I did not know that. Um, uh, but now I understand that it's not about the number of people who follow me. It's about the quality of those people who follow. It's about the quality of people that I connect with. So when we ask ourselves, you know, is there room for another big time YouTuber? I don't know, but who cares? What matters is, can you tell your story well enough, many times over enough, in ways that people will connect with you and those people that connect with you are the ones that you're looking for to build business with that's where our focus needs to be so the answer is like yeah and and of course it comes down to definition of success so let that be the last thing yeah for real for real is that um success is defined by what you think is successful and in my eyes my my definition is involves um, being able to pay my bills, being able to provide for my family, being able to do the work that I enjoy doing and being happy to sit down and say, oh, let's do this drawing because I'm not just being paid to do it, but because I enjoy drawing this. Um, that's success to me, having the means to take vacations, to take time off, to have days where, you know what, I don't have to do anything. I don't know any, I owe anyone nothing, anything. I don't know how to, what's the proper way of saying those words? I don't owe anyone anything. Though, that to me, that is success. You know, would I like to see stacks and be a kingpin of art? I don't know. That, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. We'll be, uh, you know, sell the movie rights to my uh um comic book and mobile game creations sure that'd be great yes 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 you know 50 million dollar deals for netflix or whatever sure that's that's cool that'd be, I, I would love that too but that's not what drives me what drives me is having the things that i want right now that makes me comfortable that gives me the su sustainability that i need to run a business be happy with my business, be happy with the results that I'm getting and still have time for my family and my loved ones and so on. Um, define what success means to you. What is it that would you would like to see in your life? And, uh, and, and that's another whole nother conversation when it comes down to my process of vision, uh, goals, plans, and calendar. You know, we need to know what... It, Again, the same example. What's the finish line? That's the vision. Seeing yourself come across the finish line. Yes, you know. 
I made it. Maybe maybe you want your uh, the goal to not just to cross the finish line, but the goal would be to be the first one to cross the finish line. Or maybe just do it under, you know, the one of your to hit a certain time, you know, in the marathon. Like, I made it, and it was not the three hours; it was two hours. So that could be the goal. So now you got a plan. Like, well, I know I need to train. I know I need to um, get my stamina right, I get my breathing right, eat correctly, drink a lot of water, get my sweat glands working properly. Boom, boom, boom. Right, get the right running shoes. And get the right gear so um, I don't kill myself out there training or even when it, during the marathon. And then the final thing is the, the calendar. Well, I can't just talk about it. I need to do it. I need to look at my Sunday through Saturday, Monday through Friday, and start fitting things in. And so by using that mindset, we're able to then define what our success is, what our goals are. And then realizing how certain things work in our favor, how some of these tools on social media can help us get to those, get to that vision, get to that goal. And then we apply it and work it slowly and surely every day, little by little and starting where we are right now. We have to have the thriving artist mindset, not the starving artist. Forget that. There's nothing cute or cool about being a starving artist um i'm not starving i refuse to starve there were days when i was hungry real hungry, a whole lot of days a long time ago yes and uh and the reality is that we do have to sacrifice and sometimes we sacrifice uh, um paying for a meal in order to buy a sketchbook or some pencils or some art materials but the reality today right now is that we have so much abundance around us we have so many tools around us that you just have to sacrifice the leisure time you sacrifice um hanging out time and, and right now hardly as much hanging out time as it usually has been historically in society today so it's really about setting our sights and being serious about what we want setting our sights in the place that we want to be being serious about taking on the plans that are going to get us there and then slowly starting today start now 2020 that's been my hashtag all this year and let 2020 be the year that changes something in your life in the future, when you look back at 2020, you want to say, 2020 is the year that I started a podcast. That's right. 2020 is the year when I started that blog. You know what? 2020 is the year I started that web series. You know what? That's, that's crazy. That was 2020. Don't, don't, don't look back at 2020 and say, oh, yeah, that was that pandemic, man. It was terrible. No. Look back at 2020 and be like, yes, that's when I was at Subsum. I heard Dan talking, and he says, start where you are, with what you got, and, and do it right now. And I did. So please check out some of the resources and, um, and info that we share at artisking uh, underscore ATL on Instagram and Twitter. On the YouTube channel is artisking. And uh, we share a lot of resources, including lots of links out to Chris Doe, Gary V, and everybody out there sharing similar information that touches on something that's going to help you get ahead if you set your mind to it, if you set your thriving artist art life mindset to it. I am Delta Tango Mike. Find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Delta Tango Mike. My website is deltatangomike.com. And I love to hear from you. Please tag me in your work. Send me questions. Email me questions. Um, let me know what information you're looking for. What kind of um, resources will help you move forward towards your goals to find, li finally live your vision as a thriving artist. Talk to you later.